Today's video is about the silver car. It's the first video on the silver car and I have the pedals. The silver car has a very stiff clutch and it kind of creaks a little bit when you hit the clutch and it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like the red car. So I'm parting out the red car. These are the pedals out of the red car. And I'm gonna do the G50 pedal cluster rebuild on these. Now this pedal system worked pretty well in the red car, um, but while I got it out, I'm just going to rebuild it. Just wanna see if we can get this apart with any luck. Fingers crossed. And by the way, if you haven't already heard, the silver car has a nickname, Bonito, because I kind of think it looks like a silverfish with the blue top. Tell me in the comments below if you like the name. So this is the pretty rare G50 G body uh, pedal system. And this has a hydraulic clutch. This is not the master cylinder for the brakes. This is the master cylinder for the clutch. I can wiggle the brake pedal just a little bit. It's not too bad. So that is what the rebuild consists of. It's basically replacing all the bushings and uh, cleaning it up. The linkage knobs on this or the ball cups on this actually feel really tight. So I don't think any of those things need to be replaced. Hopefully the cross shaft is okay on the clutch pedal, but let's take it apart. This is just a brace to I think stiffen the floor a little bit. It comes off easy enough. Some trash. I'm trying not to lose any of these little clips here. So the bushings are sort of disintegrating a little bit when I pull it off. They feel a little gummy. So time definitely, definitely time to replace these. The new ones are plastic. Some of the earlier pedals have some bronze bushings you can replace it with. But in this version, the G50, uh, it's two years only. I don't think they make the bronze bushings for that. Oh, I just realized there's a little bushing underneath here too. Hopefully I have a new one of those. I didn't realize that was there. There's really no tension on the spring uh, when it's in this position. So we'll go ahead and remove the cross shaft from that guy, that just came out from, from there. And then this system, spring. Came out this way, so the curled portion touches the cam there. And now it's a little probably easier to get that tie bar off we have better access to it. Now it just falls right off. And these all feel like they're a little bit gummy, like it had some old grease on there and it's just kind of waxy feeling. And this guy here is a rubber bushing. I don't think this is replaceable. I think this is molded as part of this piece appears that you can reposition this cam on the, the piece here. So I'll have to think about that a little bit more, but that's a really interesting part. We'll just clean it up. So then this spring here is part of the brake return spring and it does have a little bit of tension on it, but not much. So I think it's now time to start driving out the roll pins and I can see one, two, three roll pins here. And I'm not sure this is gonna really help, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of Croil on the roll pins. They look a little bit rusty. 
All right, we'll let that soak for a few minutes and then we'll come back with the hammer and start whacking it. It's so clever that they put this little window in here because my vice grips fit almost perfectly, which that's gonna help hold this thing down as I smack it. So I have two vice grips here on the corner of the bench. I think that should be good enough. I'm starting with this punch here. These are pretty sharp punches too. So you don't want to mushroom the top of the pins. Okay, now that pin just hit the table as well. So now I'm gonna try to finish driving them out with um, my body against this. Just, it doesn't have as much force against it, but it's already loose. So let's just try. And of course, it ends up on the floor, but at least it's out. Okay. Thank you, clamps. You can rest over here now. And there is the pin, one of them. Let's find the one on the floor, and then that should be enough to slide everything apart. Got it. Yeah, see, how, see what happens with the kind of rusty spots and some of the old grease? The coil kind of breaks it up, so now it's free. That guy, that looks like this comes this way. And that comes off, and then the spring comes off. Okay, so there's two bushings inside the, I think this is the brake pedal, yeah. So these have worn pretty thin, it looks like. But they're not worn through, which is a good sign. This is the clutch pedal, and this shaft here, it looks like it will come out. So let's give it a few taps. And some coil. See, the rust was grabbing onto that one too, but it ended up coming apart. Shaft looks like it's in good condition. Still has the plating on it, so luckily uh, we got to this one in time before it started to wear into the shaft itself. So this one, like I said, was a nice driving car. I just see like a tiny bit of marks on there, but it's not, you can't feel it with the fingernail. It's basically just probably had some dust in between the bushings on it. I suspect on the other car, you know, the silver car, I suspect that it's metal to metal contact. Cause when I hit the clutch, I can hear some creaking and some grabbing. This intermediate piece here also has no evidence of, I mean, it has some shiny spots, but really no gouging or deep grooves in it. There we go. And there's one more bushing in there we need to get out. So I think we can. Yep, popped right out. So like I said, these parts do not look that bad. There's also a little rubber guy here. This I think is for the throttle return. So it doesn't make a clicking sound, but this is probably just a piece of tubing. We'll see if we can replace that with something off the shelf. 
this is the axle the spring rides on and it's also not damaged. It's pretty good shape. Now for some quick degreaser. This is just a wooden uh, skewer. We'll clean it up the best we can, try to preserve whatever plating is left. This is yellow zinc, but we can probably find some paint that's a pretty close match to the yellow zinc. Just want to prevent it from rusting anymore. It's come pretty clean. Now let's put it in the ultrasonic cleaner and just get all the loose stuff off. In they go to the ultrasonic cleaner. We'll throw all the parts in. Come back in 20, 30 minutes and uh, see how they are. We'll have to rotate this a few times. There's a bug in there. This is just Dawn dish soap. It's not that aggressive, but it should do wonders to these parts. You can see the, the, the brown color rust, so we'll do a little bit more on that. Ultrasonic is not gonna take care of rust. Like the plating on this is still intact. No point in, in having to really recoat this stuff. Um, the springs have a little bit of rust on the inside, so I think we'll hit scotch bright, maybe paint these black. I'm going at this with the wire wheel, but I'm also using a little bit of metal conditioner. <laughs> this is uh, osphoric acid. And so the two do a pretty good job of, of getting rid of rust. So you just want to keep that surface wet and then let the brush do its work. It's pretty much got it. So now it goes into the uh, ultrasonic cleaner one more time, water rinse, and then uh, wax and grease remover, and then we can uh, paint it. A Little bit of surface rust on the inside of that spring. Comes off pretty easily with the metal conditioner and this wire brush on the inside. Just work that around. And for the most part, it wipes right off. This guy here came out of the ultrasonic cleaner pretty nice. So once again, it's just bare steel. So we'll, we'll paint this as well black. On these, these springs have high carbon content. And so you don't really want to electroplate these. You don't want to take them to the plater like I would have, I should have done for the, the base. This can become brittle with the plating and actually cause it to break. So in this case, paint is the best method. So I sprayed that stuff outside because my car is uh, inside at the moment. So this is now dry. I just quickly sprayed it uh, outside. It's not perfect. Um, it does look pretty similar. So this is the factory gold. This is a 30 year old, you know, gold plate, zinc plate. And this is what the paint looks like. And I, did, I didn't use anything special other than it's called metallic gold uh, from the auto parts store. Not my best work. Um, this stuff has got some level of protection. The moment uh, brake fluid gets on this, it's going to be bubbled and toast. So the zinc plating would be a far superior solution. But most of it is still zinc. It's just the base here that had some rust on it. And it's better than nothing, but like I said, uh, it really should have been replated. Yeah, the fit of these bushings, the new ones at least, are very nice. Okay. This is a split bushing, so even though it fits in here kind of loose, I think when the shaft goes in, it'll get, you know, larger, so... It fits great when it's split open slightly, when it fits over this, so that's good. I'm using just a little bit of chassis grease or wheel bearing grease on the inside. And that's mostly just to protect this from rusting on the inside, because it's bare steel. And then the actual bushings are either self-lubricating or I'll use this stuff. This is called Seal Glide. It's a, uh, it, it's, it doesn't harm the plastic. It's actually meant for plastic and it doesn't attract a bunch of dirt. I think the chassis grease, it over time it gets real stiff and waxy, 
So that just makes the pedals not work as well. And then just a quick fit check of all the bearings. It looks like everything is gonna fit really nice. There is still some wobble, but like I, su like I suspected, that's just the way the parts are. And this guy goes like this, but I just realized, see how there's too much space right there? This bushing is in backwards, so I need to knock that out real quick, push it in the other direction. That does make more sense. That way there, it can't just fall out. This is why I like these smooth jaw pliers. It doesn't really damage anything. And the jaws are parallel, so when you, when you squeeze this, it just pushes it in. It's amazing. Okay, so check the fit here. Yeah, that's perfect. That stops against there. So let's go ahead and put some more lubricant on that. This gets pinned to the shaft, so that's all right. Okay, I think that's right. I'm gonna go ahead and drive the pin in, starting with the middle one, and then we'll work on the ends later. And I did not get new pins, but these are in good condition already. And now for the clutch pedal, that should do it. I think that's the right, it can't go on any other way, right? That looks right. Once again, reusing the old parts. Don't need to change everything to new. Sometimes the old stuff is better. Okay, so see that pin is even on both sides. So we just got two down, one more to go. And you should make sure we don't put this on backwards. It could go this way or it could go this way. But I happen to know that this faces the tunnel because this hits a micro switch and I think it turns off the cruise control if you push the clutch in, which like would make sense if you're shifting gears. Okay, so that pin is roughly centered in that one too. They just, it's a little long, but I think they use all three pins the same, just keep it simple. So that looks right to me. Um, I did clean this bushing. So this is the one that goes right onto the master cylinder push rod. And I checked the fit. I didn't get a new one on this one, but I did check the fit here and it's okay to reuse the stock one, the original, I think it's fine. So I'm not going to replace that. Things are moving nice and free. The wiggle is minimal. So feels good so far. This goes this direction here. And then this, I had it on the curved. I had it like that. Let me just double check. Okay, now this is a little bit higher pressure. So I am gonna use the chassis grease on this one. There's no plastic. This is just metal to metal. So I am gonna use like I said, the wheel bearing grease. And this is the smaller clip. Snap. Okay, this one's a little hard to get on. Really, um, if I was to do this again, I would Install it here first and then do this one second. You can do this when the parts are out of the housing. It's just the housing's kind of in the way. So I would have done that a little differently next time. And 
And we need to make sure this is not backwards. Let's see. It's either that way or this way. That's that. I decided to go ahead and reuse this ball cup. It's not worn, but I am cleaning it out, getting that old grease out of there. I just use engine degreaser for that. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then once again, metal to metal contact, I do use the chassis grease on that one. This is another piece that really could have been replated, but this is definitely not a show car. It's actually a rental car. I'm just gonna store this spring on here. This is the one that holds the brake clip on. We just store that there. And then we got one bolt left over. That's just for this, this brace that goes here on the side. It's important that it goes through there. And there should be a lock washer on this. I need to find the lock washer. Here it is, it looks like that. But this will keep everything together for me. Now, let's go back and look at this little cam adjustment. When I push it to the down position, it, it goes over center on that cam. When I push this down, it, it gives a, a, a distinct pressure on the spring. But there's a point in time where there is a significant amount of spring pressure. It actually helps push the clutch down for you. So if we look through that window there, there's two marks roughly at about one o'clock. And the cam there, it can be adjusted for more or less spring pressure. So that's an adjustment that I might want to play with when this gets installed in the car. The other thing I never liked about the red car is the clutch engagement release point was very high up on the travel. So the clutch would be almost all the way out before you'd move out, of, uh, out from a stoplight. So this length here is adjustable and I do want to play with that to make the clutch engage sooner. I like the clutch to engage just like an inch or two off of the floor. This one was engaging like almost at the end of its travel. I can't put this in the car yet because I don't even have space in the garage for the silver car while the red and the yellow car are still here. But this can go up on the shelf for another day when it's time to just swap out the pedals. It'll be a lot quicker to swap them out than it would be to remove and replace and do all that. So thanks again for watching my video on, on how to restore the G50 pedal cluster. That's it for now. See you next week.